Okay, so we want to start a new project. So the first thing we need to do is to either draw or import our geometry. Now, Bobcat is a Windows-based application, so it does support drag and drop. In this case, we are going to uh, drop a solid model onto our drawing screen. And once we do that, the part will just open up. Okay. So from here, really what we want to look at is creating a new job and how that's done. So I, we, if you look, uh, if you look across the bottom left-hand side of the data cam tree manager, there's a few icons. The one that has to do with your tool path and your machining job is this one right here. Okay, and if you pull this out a little bit, you'll see that it says cam. If depending on your screen resolution, it'll probably say cam tree. Okay, now from here, you can right click on machine defaults and create a new job. Now, Bobcad supports a variety of job types from milling, turning, wire to nesting. In this case, it's going to be a milling job. The next thing that we want to look at is the type of machine we're going to run this on. Uh, if it's a four axis machine, three axis machine, uh, that will affect uh, what options are available in the software. In this case, we're going to use the default three axis machine, which works in most applications. The next thing we want to do is run the stock wizard. Uh, what the stock wizard does is allow you to define the stock uh, shape or type that you're going to work with. In this case, we're going to choose rectangular. Uh, from here, what there's a couple of options, but basically we are wrapping a stock box around the geometry that's on the screen. In this example, I want to add some additional stock around the outside of the part. So I'm going to do that in X, Y, and Z. The next thing we want to do is set our origin. Our origin is going to be our zero position as far as where we touch off on the machine. So we can click origin and then choose our origin location. Once we're done, we'll choose OK. And at this point, we've set up our milling job, our stock, and where our zero position would be. OK, now that we have our job and our stock set up, with our zero. Uh, if we want to change our material for speed and feed calculations, we can do so. You would just right click on this material here. But otherwise, we're going to just jump in and start loading cutting strategies. So the way you do this is you go to machine setup, you right click, and then these are all the cutting strategies you have available. Now you could load in features that were predefined, and you can also copy and paste cutting strategies from other files that you've worked on. But in this example, we're going to start from scratch. So we'll go to mill three axis. From here, we want to select our geometry. Now you have a number of different tools to select from uh, selection tools. You can window select, um, you can pick on the geometry directly, but we also have some tools for pick by color, pick by layer, uh, and this will allow you to uh, select geometry quickly when you're using different layers or different colors. In this case, we're going to choose select all, and then once we have the geometry selected, we'll hit our space bar to lock in that selection. Now this option here is for a boundary or a containment boundary. This way you can limit where the toolpath is cutting. We're not going to use that in this example. Uh, we have some clearance options as far as where the tool goes uh, at a rapid or how far above it feeds. The defaults will work just fine. Now this is where you get to choose the types of operations you want to run on the geometry you've selected. So unlike other CAM systems where operations are loaded in separately, using the Bobcad system you can load in multiple operations at a time and this is a real time saver so in this example we want to load in a roughing routine to rough out the material so we're going to use advanced rough then uh, we want to use uh, a, a semi finish or finish routine we're going to use planer in this example to come back and finish the part now you can do any combination of operations uh, which also support rest machining 
uh, in other optimized strategies. But the idea here is to load in all the operations you're going to use to remove material for this part. Now, from here, now that we've chose, I've chose two operations, a roughing routine, which is like a 3D pocket, and then a, a finishing routine, which is like mowing your lawn, planer goes back and forth, okay? So from here now, we just need to define the parameters. Now, you'll notice an explorer type view over here, and then you'll also notice a, a next previous finish uh, click through over here. So more advanced users generally will jump through the interface and uh, go to those uh, areas that they want to customize or edit parameters for. Newer users will typically next next through the software to make sure that they have all the, the questions answered that they wanted. In this case, uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Now there's a number of ways that you can call tools. In this case, I'm just creating tools on the fly, but you do have a tool crib so you can preload tools into your crib and you also have a tool library so you can load in tools from your library uh, in this case again I'm just typing in the diameter that I want to work with my speeds and feeds are being generated over here uh, this is based off the material in my tooling I can always come in here and override this to put in uh, the speeds and feeds that I might want to work with now again this will depend on the machine that you you have and how much horsepower and tooling information but generally speaking uh, you just type in the values known to work in your shop so we have our uh, quarter inch end mill for our roughing routine for our finishing routine we're gonna use a quarter inch uh, ball end mill uh, to define a ball end mill we just add a quarter radius and I'm gonna use the same uh, settings that I used before uh, this is 5500 you can use different settings or uh, whatever again settings are known to work best into your shop now from here again I'm kind of jumping around but I've set up the two tools that I'm going to use I'm going to use an offset style path I'm going to do a 125 step down uh, I'm going to do a 125 step over I'm going to leave 20 thou for finishing and I'm going to loosen up my tolerance here so these are going to be the settings that I'm going to use for my depth of cut and width of cut and stock for finish uh, as far as some additional options, I'm going to say machine flatlands, and uh, that's about it for that one. The next one, I want to look at the type of routine. I'm going to do a zigzag routine. It's going to be on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to step over uh, 50 thou. I'm going to cut that to finish, uh, adjust my tolerance here, and everything else looks all right so the last thing that I want to do is I want to compute my toolpath and this is where we'll get some toolpath generated uh, based off of our parameters and the models that we've selected now that we've generated some toolpath you'll see the toolpath is displayed on your model Unfortunately, it's displayed as lines and arcs in different colors, so it's difficult to tell exactly how this part has been machined or if it's been machined properly. That's why we use a simulation process. Uh, once you have your toolpath generated, you can go to the simulation, uh, you can go to modules and then simulation, and this will launch a three axis simulation uh, based or solid simulation based on your your cutter and other settings that you've used you'll notice your tool shank and holder is displayed there's a bunch of uh, tools to you know to list out your operations uh, reports as far as how long the cycle time is going to take so from here you can uh, play the simulation and you can see exactly uh, what's happening. Now, typically what you see happening on the screen here is what's gonna happen out at the machine. So it gives you a really good idea of what's going on. Now, you'll use the simulation to visually verify what has happened and to give you an idea of some things that you may need to do. Like in this example here, uh, you can see that the finish on this inside wall would need some improvement uh, you can also see that 
the finish on this top surface probably needs some improvement as well. Uh, but just visually uh, looking at the part, you can get a good idea of what's going on. But we also have some tools to analyze the part. Uh, one of them is a deviation report. And this is a great way for you to find where leftover material is. After you go to the deviation section, uh, you click this icon right here, and uh, it will do some calculations in the background. And based on those calculations, it will show a color map of where leftover material is. Now, this is a really good, uh, again, a really good way to, to visually check where leftover material is or if you're gouging the part with intolerance. And you can see in blue here, this gives you the range of material that's left. So really, we're looking for things that are within green. That would be within tolerance and uh, or within this range here. Uh, you know, in anything in yellow or red, these these are going to be negatives cutting into the part. So this is a, a really good good way to tell what's going on. Now, if you want to adjust your scale, you can do that as well. Uh, you can go to your gradient down here and uh, adjust what these values are. And then after you adjust those values, you give it a range, uh, minimum, maximum range to look within. Then you can rerun the report to get a better idea or a more refined idea of where you're at. And in this case, we can see the, the scallops that are happening uh, based on the step over that we used. Now that we know what's going on in the simulation, uh, the next thing that we would want to do is to go back and to adjust our tool pass. Now, that could be changing tooling, that could be adding additional operations. It's all going to depend on the part that you're trying to produce. Now, if you guys need to make adjustments to your tool path, you just go back to your feature, right click and edit, and you can change all your parameters or add additional operations. Once you're satisfied with the tool path that you've created for your part by creating tool path, running it through a simulation, and then verifying the routines, the last step that you want to do is to post up your code. Now there's a couple of things that you may want to consider. Under your milling tools, if you right click on your milling tools, you can go to verify tool assignment. And what this will do is show you which tools you're using and also the tool numbers that are being used. Now, if you uncheck use automatic tooling, it will use the database tool numbers. Or if you double click on the tool number itself, you can set the tool numbers to what is in the carousel on your machine. OK, so now that you have verified your tool assignment, the post processor that you're going to use is going to be tied to the machine. In this case, it's the BC3X mill post. If you need to change that, you can right click and choose edit and then select from this directory of wh whichever post of your choosing. Now you can download them from our website and then choose the post that's appropriate for your machine. Now when you go to post your job, you can right click on milling job and choose post. This will give you a preview of the code that is generated. Uh, you can't edit the code here, you can just look at it. If you need to save the code, you can right click and choose save as, or you can choose edit CNC to bring up the Predator editor. Now if you just want to post the code and you don't want to look at it, you can go to your milling job and do post and save as, and this will allow you to save the code right at that point.